Hey friends, welcome back to Joe and Tell. I am Joe, and yes, we are back on the front porch getting ready to smoke a pipe. It has been way too darn cold out for me to be out here smoking a pipe, so that's why I haven't had any new videos recently. But uh, it has finally warmed up a little bit. It's quite foggy out this morning, but it's not in the single digits. Uh, so I am, I am excited to be back out here. Um, I want to introduce you to my next pipe, uh, as well as talk to you about something that's been kind of running through my mind over the cat past couple of weeks. You know, we had Christmas and New Year's uh, break, so that's a lot of time with family uh, and just some interactions I had and, and got me thinking and just kind of wanted to throw it out there and, and see what kind of feedback I get. So, uh, but before I do that, let's let's show you this, this latest pipe. It is a Peterson Iran smooth nickel mounted 53 fishtail tobacco pipe. Uh, the shape of it is a low vat shape, which I didn't even know what that meant. Uh, apparently it means it has a longer rounded shank here and a the smaller whistle shaped mouthpiece or stem, which is also called a saddle stem. So that's what makes it a low vat. I thought it was a billiard pipe, but um, yeah. So just pretty straightforward. Not a lot to it. I just liked how short it was and compact. Uh, but in it, I have some uh, Cornell and Deal Star of the East, which is a delightful English blend. So I'm gonna light that up. And then I wanna share with you the thoughts I've been having over the last couple of weeks. Whoops. I hope everybody had a, a great time off over the holiday uh, and and are, are able to get back into the to the grind uh, as easily as possible as comfortably as possible it's always difficult to go back into daily life after having time off and being able to relax. There we go. All right, got that going some coffee real quick. I can't get over this fog. It's so crazy. Uh, all right. So I had some thoughts over the holiday break. I keep blowing tobacco off this book. So, um, and this this topic may be a little heavy, a little, uh, little deep. I don't know. We'll see. I don't really know where it's going to go. Um, and whether you're a religious person or not, um, I don't think that in the context of this conversation, I don't think that really matters a whole lot. But I just want to preface because what I'm going to read to you is, is from the Bible. And... Uh, but I think it applies to just about every one. And this is uh, out of, where, where is it? Hmm. Here we go. It is Numbers 14, 18, and it reads, the Lord is slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, forgiving iniquity and transgression, but he will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers to, on the children to the third and fourth generations. Well, up 
upon first reading that, it's like, yikes. Okay, so the, that means the mistakes that my grandfather made, I get punished for. Now, I don't know if that's a literal thing, if that's what it literally means. But even if it doesn't, one of the things I have noticed is that the behaviors and thought patterns and habits that our fathers and grandfathers had do impact us. Sometimes quite extensively, like, you know, I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily being punished for any of my dad's mistakes, but I'm certainly feeling consequences of it. Um, you know, he, he, my dad basically was out of my life at the age of 10 or 11. Uh, and I hadn't, I, I never saw him again. And, uh, and then he passed away. So certainly some of the choices that he made, uh, affected me greatly. And so I can see that as being, you know, not being punished for his mistakes, but certainly being affected by a previous generation's decision in a very personal way. And that got me to thinking over Christmas and, and New Year's and the break and being home with family is that, what am I doing to stop that? Am I then just a gateway for that to continue down to my kids? Especially my son. You know, we all say, oh, a lot of us say, I don't want to be anything like my parents. And in some ways we aren't, but in a lot of ways we're exactly like them. And you, you can't really help it. There's no, there's no way around it. We operate in what we've seen and what we've experienced and what has been our examples. So, yeah, I'm just, I like, you know, some of the interactions I had with my son over the holiday break and, and whatnot, it was just not the things, not the person I want to be, you know, yelling, anger, things like that, just arguments basically. But, what am I doing to stop anything that my dad influenced me with in a negative way from being passed down to my son? Because chances are that whatever I'm instilling in him now or lack thereof is going to get passed down to his kids and possibly their kids. So I don't have an answer, unfortunately. But I sure wish I knew how to break that cycle. I mean, I think being aware of it kind of helps, but it's not easy uh, by any means, because again, those patterns are so ingrained in us. Sometimes it takes a tremendous amount of effort to even notice that we are in that pattern. So, like I said, a little bit heavier on the topic today, but I, I, I couldn't shake it. I wasn't sure what I wanted to talk about this morning, and that just kept coming back to mind. Um, so I thought I, I should share it. Uh, again, really wanting to to break the ties of in a neg in the negative ties to the past, the previous generations, um, and and leading something greater than. Than what I received at times. Uh, that's the goal there. And that's why I said I think that that Bible verse, religious or not, uh, or what your stance is on the Bible, uh, I think that really speaks just to the human condition. And uh, I think everybody can relate. Everybody's had somebody that's let them down or hurt them. And we need to do our best to not pass that on to treat others better. And I say that 
I'm talking to myself here. Not, not, I'm not preaching. I'm just, I'm just sharing with you guys about what I'm thinking. So that's about it. If you guys have any thoughts or comments about that specific topic, I'd love to hear them. Uh, you guys are always really great about communicating and, and, um, if you have any answers, <laughs> those would be really nice too. Cause I sure as heck don't, but that's going to do it for today, guys. Again, it's the Peterson Aran smooth nickel mounted 53 fishtail tobacco pipe with some Cornell and deals star of the East English tobacco, which is a lovely, lovely blend. If you're interested in picking some up, check out the description. I'll have a link to that tobacco uh, in the description. So appreciate you guys stopping by. Sorry it's been so long. Hopefully I'll be out here more often. I don't know. We still got a lot of cold weather coming. So uh, we'll see what happens. But thanks again, and we'll catch you in the next video.